Visual vertigo is a generic term to describe dizziness triggered by visual stimuli of some kind. This can also be a contributing factor to those who suffer from motion sensitivity. The dizziness brought on by such visual stimuli can be described as spinning, brain fog, rocking, floating, heaviness, etc. The visual stimuli itself can also be quite varied and include looking at busy patterns such as stripes, dots, checkerboard patterns, or when confronted with moving objects such as a bus moves past you when sitting in a stopped car. In a normal individual, such visual stimuli may cause fleeting, if any, symptoms. But for someone who suffers from visual vertigo, it may cause significant, persistent, and or recurrent dizzy symptoms on a regular basis. To explain, let's talk about normal balance first. A person's balance system is comprised of three parts. The inner ear vestibular system, which is responsible for sensing rotational and linear movement vision to provide visual cues on where oneself is oriented in space relative to other objects, and proprioceptive system, which involves the skin, muscles, and joints. When everything is working fine, the brain merges information from all three systems to provide correct balance. However, for patients who suffer from visual vertigo, the brain puts greater emphasis on visual input, overriding any information it gets from the inner ear and proprioceptive systems. This results in incorrect balance summation, which leads to dizziness. For example, many individuals will often erroneously feel movement even when they are physically still when watching a large screen IMAX scene of a roller coaster or flying. In this situation, both the proprioceptive and inner ear vestibular systems are telling the brain that there is no movement present, but the brain ignores these correct signals and instead falsely emphasizes movement that the eyes see. Exercises can be performed to help the brain learn to suppress or desensitize visual input to a more normal level relative to the inner ear balance and proprioceptive systems, ultimately resulting in normal balance. The exercises are as follows, which progressively get more difficult. So the first exercise we have is called gaze stabilization. You're gonna place your finger in front of you and just turn your head side to side like this, keeping your gaze on the finger. You wanna do this for about 20 seconds, and then you can switch to nodding for 20 seconds, maintaining that focus on the finger as well. So you can do this walking as well, keeping that finger out in front of you and turning your head side to side as you continue to walk. And then also with the nodding, So make sure you do each for about 20 seconds. Next, we have the VOR cancellation, vestibular ocular reflex cancellation. And we're gonna take our finger like this and follow it with our head about 30 degrees side to side. Again, we're doing this for 20 seconds. And you can also do this the opposite way if you'd like to try. So instead of turning your head side to side with the finger, you're gonna turn your head in the opposite direction that the finger is going still looking at the finger as you go. Try that out for 20 seconds as well. The next exercise we have is called the smooth pursuit. Taking our finger out in front of us, we're gonna rotate the finger side to side in about a 30 degree angle, but we're gonna keep our head still and only the eyes will follow. All these exercises were beginning with 20 seconds but this exercise you can also try while walking as well. Keeping that head nice and still, eye following the finger as it moves back and forth, left to right. So we're gonna be doing some head turns, nods, and diagonals. This is something that you just do staring and not focusing on anything in particular. Do each one for about 20 seconds. So head turns just side to side like this, about 30 degrees rotation. The nods are going to go up and down. Again, not trying to focus on anything in particular. And then diagonals is going to be from top to bottom. Eyes are gonna look up, then down. 20 seconds for each exercise, which is gonna be more than 20 reps each, depending on how fast you do these movements. Also make sure to do the other side as well. 
and you can also perform these while walking too. So just walking, neutral gaze, doing our head turns, and our diagonals. Make sure to do the other side in diagonals as well. Our next exercise is the side-stepping head turns. So we're gonna step to the side and look there, then look forward. Step to the other side, look forward. Step, forward, step, forward. Just like this for 20 seconds. And then after you give that a try for 20 seconds, you're going to look the opposite way, but I'm stepping that way. So I'm looking that way, stepping that way, and then looking forward as I step together and doing the same thing, opposite steps for 20 seconds. So I'm going to be doing some heel toe raises. And for this exercise, you wanna make sure that you're two to four feet away from the background in front of you so that that background fills your visual space. So I'm just gonna stand back from my background. I'm gonna rock onto my tiptoes. And as I do, I'm gonna shift my weight forward onto those tiptoes. As I come back, I rock into my heels. My toes are gonna lift off the ground like this. Now I'm standing here showing you so you can see me, but you really wanna stay that two to four feet away from your background so your visual field is filled. It's gonna look something like this. The last exercise we're going to do is the alternating side lunges. We're not lunging in a fitness sense. What we're basically doing is we're stepping out to the side and we're going to shift our weight forward towards that foot that we're stepping with like this. And we're turning our gaze in that direction as well. So it's kind of like we're lunging in that direction, coming back to center and then alternating to the other side back to center. Remember to shift your weight forward, bringing your gaze to the side and coming back to center for about 20 seconds. Keep in mind that when doing these exercises, there are different visual backgrounds that can also be used to vary the difficulty level in terms of visual stimulation. The first background is a blank background in a neutral color. For example, a blank wall. Second background is one that is busy or complex with a variety of colors or patterns. You can find such a background with a shower curtain, wallpaper, or bookshelf. You can also use window blinds. By adjusting the blind angles, you can get different stripe variations along with an outdoor scenery combination. The third background is a busy or complex scenery that is moving. For example, looking out a window, watching trees swaying in the breeze. The final background is a busy scenery that also has depth and breadth along with complex movement. This background can be encountered walking through a grocery store aisle or riding in a car through traffic. There are YouTube videos providing such different backgrounds one can use as well, but in order to be effective, make sure to watch them on a large enough screen that fills as much of your vision as possible. Some suggestions can be found in the text description box.